Okay, so we're going to talk about types of solutions and kind of how something would dissolve in water to make a solution, to make an aqueous solution. All right, so very, very brief. First is a nice little review from way back at the beginning of the year. Okay, so a solution is a homogeneous mix. Okay, and of course, again, it's chemistry. Welcome to a bunch of lazy people. We abbreviate everything. So S O L N, solution. All right, and homogeneous means. If we remember, right, it means it's mixed the same throughout. Okay, so it's mixed evenly throughout. All right, so uh, that's the basic idea of what a solution is. It is a mixture. So I have more than one type of either element or molecule in that mix in that thing and it's mixed evenly all the way throughout okay and there are different types of solutions so i can have a metal alloy all right where i have two different types of metals mixed together okay most common example that we talk about typically in high school is brass okay brass is zinc and copper mixed together Okay, and you can see in this lovely, beautiful picture, you've got zinc and copper, and they're mixed together to make brass. Okay, I have a mixture, it is homogeneous, it's mixed the same throughout, and that's how you get all of your brass instruments that hopefully someone in this classroom plays in band. All right, so I have a metal alloy, and brass is the most common example. Uh, next, okay, you can have a gaseous, E-O-U-S, okay, you can have a gaseous mixture or a gaseous solution, okay, um, and tried to get some kind of picture to show you this. So if I had two different types of gases, uh, totally separated, right, so the, the stop clock is, is closed, I have two totally separate gases, if I open them, Gases will mix, it's diffusion, we'll talk about that later when we do gases, okay? Um, but the two gases will completely mix and they will mix evenly. So I have this nice little mixture of gas, okay? I have whatever the green gas was and whatever the purple gas was and they're mixed evenly. Whenever you allow gases to, to mix, or almost always, okay? When you allow gases to mix, they will mix evenly. They'll have a homogeneous mixture or solution, okay? And a common one we talk about would be like air. And it gets a little complicated, but in general, right, if we're trying to generalize and, and make things easy for us to understand, air is a mixture. We've got nitrogen in the air, takes up the most of what we breathe. I also have oxygen, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, other things that are in the air. Okay, but in general, air would be loosely considered a, a homogeneous mixture, okay? A solution, if you will. Multiple types of gases mixed together. Okay, I can also have a liquid solution, okay? Really easy one for that would be vinegar. All right, vinegar is actually two different liquids mixed together. So I have a nerdy science picture for you, of course, okay? But uh, I have two liquids that are being mixed together. So that would be a liquid solution. So what vinegar is, is just, I think it's like 95% water and 5% acetic acid. So you're mixing two liquids together to make another solution. Okay. And last but not least, you have an aqueous solution. Okay, an aqueous solution, which is anything, I feel like this is the, the typical one that we think about with chem. Okay, so you have water or some kind of solvent. We'll talk about that word in a second. You have some kind of liquid. You are putting a solid into the liquid. You mix it up and the solid dissolves. Okay, so this would be like salt water. 
whatever, something, you know, oh, okay. Uh, a, a nice dumb one would be like your C4 pre-workout drinks, right? Um, you, you put your C4 in and you mix it up and that ends up being a homogenous aqueous solution. You've dissolved it into the liquid and your first drink of your dumb protein drink, or I'm sorry, your wonderful protein drink has the same amount of amino acids and creatine and whatever else, creatine, creatine. Uh, creatine that you would drink for your pre-workout as the last sip, assuming you mixed it well. Okay, it's a homogenous mixture. You get the idea. Same thing with salt, right? You dissolve salt in water. There you go. Okay, so the reason this is important, the four different types of solutions, is that now you actually have to pay attention to the subscripts when we're doing uh, like bonded I can't think like a chemical reaction or if you're looking at something. So if it said like NaCl and then in parentheses underneath it said Aq, that means it's aqueous. That means it's dissolved in water. Okay, it's part of a aqueous solution. If you had a liquid, vinegar is acetic acid or whatever. If you just had like H2O, you had parentheses with an L. Okay, like a parentheses in the subscript. That means it's a liquid. Duh, right? If you had something of air like N2, which again takes up the most of the air around us. Okay, and then parentheses in the subscript it had a G. That means it's a gas and metal, whatever you could have, zinc, metal, S, God. Uh, S would be solid, not metal, okay? So please pay attention to these little notations. You're actually going to have to look at them now when we're talking about solutions because you'll be able to identify if a solution is made of dissolving something in a liquid, if it was multiple liquids put together, if it's just a bunch of gases together, or if you have some some solids, okay? Or a mixture of these things, which we'll get to later, okay? But just pay attention to those. All right. Then we talk about how stuff actually dissolves in water. Okay, so again, mostly I think the thing we think about is an aqueous solution because everything else is pretty easy to visualize, right? Like we get it, gas particles are mixing together, but everything's a gas. So how do we understand something dissolving in water? Okay, water's pretty awesome. So here's my beautiful glass of water that I drew you, I know, so exciting. Okay, bunch of waters, woo. All right, and let's say I wanted to make uh, like a salt water, I'm adding salt to water, okay? So I have my lovely little sodium chloride, a salt particle, okay? And I drop that into the water, okay? I drop it into the actual liquid, okay? What actually ends up happening, because water's awesome, is water will flip itself around, it will orient itself so that the partial positive side of hydrogen is going to be facing the negative side of, of whatever the salt is, so in this case chlorine, and the partial negative side of water, so oxygen, is going to orient itself towards the partial positive side of your salt. And it's actually going to be able to pull the salt apart, it's going to be able to dissolve it. So I won't have a, an ionically bonded sodium chloride anymore. I'm going to get Okay, the chlorine is going to separate away from your sodium, okay? And it's actually going to be quite stable, which is pretty awesome, okay? If this makes sense, right? So your chlorine, which is going to be negatively charged, it's an ion, okay? It is going to be surrounded by the partially positive side of water because water is polar. Look it up if you don't remember. Okay, so the hydrogens will surround your chlorine to kind of keep it stable. Okay, 
and your oxygens of water will turn and surround the positive cation of your salt. Okay, so water is amazing at dissolving things because it's polar, okay? Water can dissolve any polar or ionic uh, compound because it's able to kind of flip itself any which way to stabilize your ions, okay? So that's actually how water is able to pull apart or dissolve different ionic compounds, polar substances, whatever, okay? Very excited. Hopefully that makes sense. And on we go. All right. Uh, there are two kind of key words that we need to know and love. Okay, one is solvent and the other is solute. Okay, it's our nice vocab terms. Okay, so your solvent would be, for example, water. It's a good example. Okay, your solvent is the thing that does the dissolving. Okay, so for example, when I put that sodium chloride into water, water does the dissolving. It's water that pulls apart the sodium chloride. Your solute would be like your salt. Okay, and it is the thing that gets dissolved. Pretty basic, don't mix them up, solvent, solute. I don't know a different way to say that. Okay, so you got this. Okay, solvent is going to be like your water. Solute would be like whatever you put in water to get dissolved. And water is awesome. We call water the universal solvent because it can dissolve pretty much everything, okay? The, the basic rule is like dissolves like, okay? So like a polar molecule like water will dissolve other polar or charged particles, so ionic um, compounds, okay? Like dissolves like. If I had oil, okay, and I add oil into water, it's not going to dissolve in water, right? It, it will, they will separate. If I put something that's nonpolar into oil, oil can dissolve that nonpolar thing, um, which you will end up doing a lab about that. Okay, so remember that. Okay, like dissolves like, very important. Polar will dissolve polar. Nonpolar will dissolve nonpolar. They won't mix together. Nonpolar is not gonna dissolve in polar. Oil does not dissolve in water. And, other than that, that's pretty much it, guys. Welcome, okay? Solutions are, are pretty easy. The basic idea of a solution, you can have four different types, okay? You can have a metal alloy, so those are solids. You can have liquids, you can have gases, and you can have aqueous. So you had a solid that dissolves into, or you have something that dissolves into your, your liquid. Okay, typically water. All right, good luck.